Okay, I left this right here where we left off. Um, just to put in a little quick side note. Uh, very important that we uh, uncheck this which is the equivalent of ejecting the uh, installation CD otherwise you're going to be in a nice loop of trying to install um, CentOS again so let's hit this and now while the uh, virtual machine restarts and CentOS boots up for the first time uh, I can actually take you and show you PuTTY uh, PuTTY is a cool little program let me uh, show you where you can get it and you're going to need it for your virtual environment or I'd say recommend it. it, it it's something that is um, pretty um, widely used even in the real world, especially in the real world I'd say because uh, or any SSH uh, terminal program you can download it right here. Once you got it up uh, you can remotely connect uh, via the command line to your um, virtual machine. So it's a really cool little feature and this is still booting up. And uh, it, it's a realistic way of doing things. You don't want to be in the network operations center. It gets pretty noisy there and cold with all the machines or hot depending on the ventilation system. And uh, you really want um, to be in your comfortable chair and just accessing this server remotely. And uh, one of the biggest problems with counseling in, um, even if you manage to find a way to copy and paste in VirtualBox, which isn't that hard, but I found a pain in the ass is um, simply uh, uh, by using a remote terminal you can copy and paste easy Oop, keep this in mind make sure determining IP information gets an OK that's important your SSH is starting up here they're creating uh, keys uh, SSHD is the actual service make sure that has an OK next to it okay this we can skip um, you could turn the firewall off if you want, it really doesn't matter, I'm going to show you another way of doing it. Let's log in with our credentials. And uh, time to install asterisk. So let's get on that, shall we? Um, well, first thing is you'll notice that I've minimized um, this, the um, virtual box manager. And we're going to minimize this in a second because all we're going to need is putty. Um, we need to find the IP of our virtual machine. We saw it determining IP information. Got an OK earlier. Um, so that's good. And, ooh, uh, looks like for whatever reason that setting I put earlier didn't stick. So I'll make sure. This is not under NAT, this is on bridged adapter. Alright, so. Uh, let's see, config, I guess I'm going to figure it out by itself, so I need to redo the IP information, I can just do it, and get down as the command, uh, down Ethernet 0. I just ignore this part, it's not important, but um, I guess it's useful for you if you ever need to learn how to refresh IP information on a Linux box. Okay, let's do if config again and yes this is an IP address assigned by my router 192.168.10.186 so we can punch this into putty now Six. okay uh, just hit yes and alright we're shown with the login screen now we're in. So now, uh, if you're familiar with Linux, you can follow me on these commands. If you're not, um, just follow through. The, again, this is just lab setup. I don't want you to stress your brain over understanding this. If you're not familiar with Linux, I want you to uh, maybe get the very basics of it. CD, uh, we're in a certain directory. Change the directory to this directory. It's the same thing as double clicking on a folder in Windows you can see what directory we're in with PWD um, and right now we have to get uh, the asterisk installation file or the tarballs, the compressed files uh, is Linux's way of putting it um, looks like I already have it up, you would have gone to asterisk.org downloads uh, how did I find this one I didn't you could also go through Google if you want uh, it's the first 
results. And you can hit downloads right from there. Uh, I think I'm going to get 1.6 tarballs. I could get 1.8. It, it doesn't matter, but I think uh, later I'm going to actually use this with a program called A2 billing, and I found a real pain in the ass to install it with the Asterisk 1.8 for some reason. So, all right. Let's get this. So wget is something that lets you download uh, the Asterisk files. Uh, what I did was I copied the link location because this is a direct uh, link. If you see in the status bar here where my mouse is, um, you can see that's the file directly. And it's not grabbing. I know why it's not grabbing it. Um, you might have to turn off your firewall. So uh, stop the totally Uh Yes. Blah 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 blah. Let's restart this. Uh, let me pause uh, the recorder and figure out why it's not going. Okay, that was weird. I tried a uh, wget on google.com. That went fine. Downloaded an index.html file. So, no, this should be up. It's, maybe it's the website having a problem. Let's try again. If I have too much trouble with that, I'll just get the one point. again okay well it finally started by itself so that's good usually it's the one second thing all right so we have that here so we could do an ls to see the files currently in here now um, just like in windows um, I'm going I'm sorry for any Linux gurus, I'm going to relate a lot of things to Windows because that's what I'm more familiar with. So here we go, I'm going to type tar xzbf, this is the same thing as uncompressing a zip file, and I could just type ast, and I hit the tab key and it completes the rest of what the name for me, so it's a handy little trick for you to know. So now that's, it's not installed, it's just uncompressed. We do an ls, we see a new directory up here with uh, the asterisk uh, that was just uh, uncompressed from this uh, zip file or tar file, tarball. So I, I can remove the old tarball, we don't need it anymore. Delete that. And uh, now I can change directory to the asterisk folder. I can see what's inside it. I highly recommend for people to read this. Um, don't know how much more planar I can put it. So, all right. In terms of installing, uh, one thing that I know we're going to need are a couple of dependencies. Um, I'll probably create a little, show off a little manual at the end of this. But we could uh, create the manual as we go along. But, uh, let me open up a notepad file. So we need certain um, files in order to get this installed. So uh, well, first thing we needed to do was change directory to here. We had to wget this file, the asterisk file here. And now what are we on? We have to get dependencies. So we're going to use yum. It's a default package handler that comes in CentOS. This yum install GCC. These are all other a bunch of other programs that um, the asterisk needs in order to install. So it's GCC, GCC, C++. Uh, I know it needs the uh, NCurses development package. And uh, I think it needs one called libxml2 development package. So we put dash y at the end of it for yes. So 
Uh, you, you're going to see the last step. I'm going to execute a file up there. It will just disappear. It was in green. It was called configure. And the configure, what it does is basically checks for all these dependencies, uh, all these other dependent programs that Asterisk is going to rely on. And when it detects one of them missing, it gives an error code. You can actually kind of figure out. Um, uh, some people don't know how to read the output output from the configure program, uh, but you're gonna see it's gonna say GCC. Uh, is it there? It's gonna say no next to it, or uh, it'll say uh, C++ compiler missing. That's GCC. That's C++. Um, I think the next one, if you try running dot slash configure again or running that configure program, it's going to want the either the lib XML2 development package or the ncurses development package. It'll tell you what it's missing. Um, one of the trick for me was um, I was used to an apt get, which is a package handler in Ubuntu, typing lib XML2 dash dev dev, and that was supposed to download development the development pro package. That was the same thing with yum. Uh, it ended up in yum. You have to make sure to specify devel, which you know is a starting of development instead of dev. So just a little key point, something that boggled my mind for a good hour, couple hours. Other things you want to do with yum in the real production environment, at least uh, yum update, yum upgrade to make sure that everything inside your uh, Linux box is updated and good. So we might have to uh, fast forward through this installation in the video. Or this will just be part one of the asterisk installation. So, oh, let me grab those commands before they disappear out of that back scroll. Yum install. Uh, it's not letting me scroll up. Let me see if I can grab it real quick. There we go. I can paste that there. So I'm basically creating the script. I'll have a link to it in the description box. So I'll just paste this in the description box. Essentially, all you have to do is copy and paste this, and you're good to go. Um, in terms of setting up your lab, mind you, a version, uh, the asterisk version may change, which would change this link. So this second part might not work. You have to double check it, which is why I'm going through this video. All right, so those packages are ready. Uh, let's. The way you execute something is you. I don't think you just uh, type something configure. No, you have to type uh, dot slash configure. And it's going to execute the program in the current directory as I showed you earlier with an ls uh, configure. It's just a program here, and uh, I'm just need to execute that to make sure all your packages are installed. Oh, I think I'm definitely over 10 minutes. I don't know if I'm 15 minutes yet, but um, I'll save it for the next video. All right.